What is going on everybody? It is your boy Yu-Gi-Oh! Hero and I'm back here with another video. Long time no see guys. If y'all do want to support me, don't forget to check out these fucking amazing people. They're giving me a chance to sponsor their product. I ordered one of their mats and it should be coming in soon. Use YH to get 5% off the purchase. Um, they're really cool. The mats look so nice and slick. Right now they got two selections but they're coming out with more really soon and I'm happy that I'm able to sponsor them so if y'all looking for and the best part is is it's really only $11.99 with $2.99 shipping so it's, you're not even paying that much for a good quality mat like I said once I get this mat in I'm gonna be doing a full review on it letting y'all know my honest opinion onto it alright so this is basically the deck I ended up taking to um, regionals last like two weeks ago so it was a really good deck. It was Mech Knight Invokes, of course. So we did pretty good when we went there. I lost game one. I lost to Zephyros. I forgot what I played in game two. I played some weird deck, but easy to uh, OTK. But um, the interesting thing was this deck did really good against the FTK decks I played. I played one of each. I played one Pendulum FTK and I played one um, Gemini FTK. And it's really interesting just to see how this deck did against that because I was able to stop their plays and I was able to actually come out with the win on both of them. But then the losses came to Zephyros, Draco, and Magician. And I gave my game four because the guy had more of a chance of getting his invite than me because he had um, he didn't have a third loss, he had a draw, so he went X21. So I was just like, you can go ahead and have the win, and yeah, he was happy about that, so I really did hope he'd get his invite, so at least I could help someone get their invite, but there's always the OTS championship whenever that's going to happen for my locals, but yeah, this is deck I took, it did pretty good, we're going to go ahead and get into deck profile for you guys, alright. There's a couple of changes I made to the deck, but I'll let y'all know on the changes. So. To round up the invokes, of course, win the three Alistairs, of course. Alistair's pretty obvious on why you run him. He's just the heart and soul of the whole engine. I think he's amazing. Until he gets effect Valor, but there's ways around that stuff. <laughs> so, next one we did was Triple Blue Sky. Blue Sky is must need. It starts off your combos. It's really broken if your opponent has basically two cards in the same column. Or even in some cases three because they'll do in the link zone or their extra deck zone and have like a monster in one set behind them. It's really nice to just get that three surge right there. Really good card combo starter along with purple nightfall. The thing about purple nightfall that I found so funny is the fact that it's a quick effect. So which means you can use it during your opponent's turn too. So like some guy, he tried to evenly match me. I forgot what matchup this was. But he activates evenly match and I tag out purple nightfall. And he just, I was able to save one card on the field. I was, I had to banish face down my, um, what was it, my, uh, magical meltdown. But we can live without that. So, like, this card is just so good. It gives you a free search. Like, if your opponent goes to end phase, you just activate his back, get a search. And he just comes back in any zone that you want him to use. So, to round it off, we ran one Red Moon, one Indigo Clip. Red Moon's alright. I... His effect didn't even come up, it was just another target. I might in the future cut him. There's some ideas that I want to do that I'll express at the end of this video. Um, that rounds up the Mech Knight. So for the hand traps, we ran three Ogres. Ogre is the best card in this format for anyone that says his aim. Just look at Electromite, what you can do to that. Um, when I, we went to game three against the Zephyros. And so I stopped him in the first play because I opened up Ash and Ogre and I was just able to shut down his play because See, you can affect Valor, the Electromite, but they still got their zones. I'd rather destroy the zones with Ogre than being able to um, just let it continue out. So I feel like the main reason I lost the Zephyr matchup was because I didn't know how they played. I never played Zephyrs until that day, so it was kind of weird. So, I did decent against them, I'd say. It was whoever opened up the most negate, basically, the way to say. Next hand trap was 3 effect Valor. I love Effect Valor. Effect Valor is so good. But, um, this card's MVP because, um, I ended up playing against a Spiral deck. And so they didn't have Resort. They go into Double Helix and you just Effect Valor them. 
that's another thing I liked about Ghost Ogre is because since um last resort I mean Spiral Resort not last resort but Spiral Resort's at one so if you ogre that field spell and they got no other plays it's just they scoop I love it and to round up the hand traps we ran two ashes if I had a third one I would honestly run it I love Ash Blossom just being able to ash your opponent's monsters makes me so happy but to round up the last monster count we're running Gemini Garden, and this is a unique engine that I like in this build, and this build's perfect for it. I feel like this deck should be seeing this build more, but that just basically rounds up the monsters. The monster count that we had in this um, build is 20 monsters, so it's a 40 card deck, 20 monsters, and we're looking at around um, 20 monsters, 20 spells, of course. My math is like, I'm exhausted long story but hey the job sucks so ran three terraforming so this is what i changed up all right um basically i was running three meltdown two terraforming now why i like this ratio over the other ratio that i ran was just because you know meltdown is kind of a break if you open up multiple meltdowns it kind of does like suck due to the fact that um you know you can only activate it once per turn you only get one search per turn but three terraformings if you open up like two terraforming and you have a mech knight it still can make a play happen it's just better because you're able to set these and special on mech knight over maximum meltdown which is only playing the field spell zone so yeah the next one we ran was three invocations now the reason I like three invocations and why I think it needs to be three at right now is because Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler and some plays with Gamma, so like if they force you to go first. But it's like hard drawing this card feels so good in those type of situations because you're just able to make your opponent go neg one. I went against a Trickstar player in my locals the day before. We got second place here and I pulled um a card that's in this deck, so <laughs> it came in handy, but um the thing about it is like he uh, Ash Blossom my um he went first of course and he Ash Blossoms my Alistair. Now I'm able to hard draw invocation and make the OTK guy just wipe his whole board and maybe press for game depending if I had a Mech Knight in hand or not. So that's why I like the invocation at three and that's why I feel like it needs to be a three for right now in this meta. Um Next card I came into running is the MVP 3 Mind Control. It's okay if you open up two of these or even all three of them. <laughs> I never had that happen yet. Because if your opponent spams the board and he has a couple of negates on the board, you can just force the um, negates with the mind controls or even take their monsters and just link off with them. I like to use mind control to take their monster and possibly go into a Saruja play. But. That's why I really like that. I also like instant fusion at one. I have two targets for it, so it depends if I'm going first or second. If I, they force me to go first, I can make Millenniumize Restrict to stop like an effect they were Ash Blossom from hitting. And if I go second, I can just use Thousand Eyes Restrict and basically take their monster. So that's really good of a play. I would try to run this at two, but yet I don't want to. Um, two pot of desires. Another reason I'll run three invocations because you can banish your invocations off of that. And my locals the day before, um, I ended up banishing three, all three invocations and all three Alistairs with the pot of desires. And I had Saruja on the board, so I wasn't drawing any Mech Knight, so I called it the Saruja beatdown because I kept trying, kept pressing for game with Saruja, so it was pretty interesting. Next card, I guess another good card to run is Scapegoat. Scapegoat is a must need. Um, I can't tell anyone enough in this type of build, if they force you to go first and you open up this and they can't, if they don't try to bait it out like Twin Twisters or Cosmic Cyclones, it's a good card to see at the end of the end phase. Um, next card was two Brewing Fusions, so when I play second at my locals, I pulled the ultimate Brewing Fusion out of the OTS 6 pack because they're giving out OTS 6 or OTS 7, and I don't want OTS 7, that's a junk OTS set now. OTS 6 was beautiful because I pulled this card right here. Um, but I only run it 2 and 1 Garnet because I feel like Brilliant Fusions have a chance of bricking. But Brilliant Fusion, like I said, is really good in this deck. And we can discuss why in a little bit here. The 1 of 1 Regeki and 1 Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn didn't even come up at all. But Regeki, I've seen a little bit of what I could do with Regeki there. 
so that's gonna be it on our spell count that's it for the whole deck you don't want to run any traps because this is a going second type of build that's basically what mech knight invokes is is going second but we'll go off into our extra deck and then we'll go into the side deck so of course my little tokens there no scapegoat tokens i'm too broke for that but um two mecha bus mecha bus really good at two i wouldn't run it at three because you just need the like room for your um mecha bus so two is good enough like you just need room in general that's all it is the <laughs> master rule four but um mecha bus is really good just forces negate you can just negate anything it's really good in this deck because you can just attack by like, press for game after you wipe their board or do whatever their board and if they draw that card that they need you just have a chance of shutting it down so that's why i like invoke mecha buff which is another reason garnet comes in handy because you can add alistair back to hand if you have another monster in hand you don't have to worry about them summoning a monster and getting the effect off but you can just normal summon alistair and get a search for um invocation and then have a spell negation guarantee for you so if something comes down to then have the hard draw spell card you just negate and then they scoot um next one we ran was one um i can't even say his name so the earth guy invoked earth because he's just a 3000 beat stick um he didn't come up that much unless i was really trying to push for game and just attack directly with like mech knights in him which he's a good target to have because since you're using scapegoats you're able to go into like proxy dragon and all that fun stuff so he's really good to have in this deck build i don't run them um 3300 because he just uses too much resource if you ask me but this is the right guy that i would recommend it over that one as bad as that sounds one um Pega trio because he just sets up otk you only really need one of them you don't need to go into any more but just one but he's really good in a pendulum matchup or even in the spiral matchup or any any matchup that stands the board so you just attack 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 and then if you have another monster attack directly and if you make saruja you can make ridiculous boards like i made where i was able to have get mechaba out and this guy out on the same board so it really comes in handy I love this deck, so yeah, that's all I can say really. Um, Millennium Eyes Restrict, you don't, for anyone that doesn't know what he does, um, basically when I'm, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target the um, effect, or once per turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls or in the graveyard and click that target to this card, so basically a thousand eyes restrict. It stops hand tracks because they have to toss for cost and then you chain. And you just take it and then negates it so you don't get your stuff negated. Also comes in handy against like, you know, Fairy Tail Snow for example, if your opponent tries to pull that out. Um that's the ice restrict. Just steals your mon like opponent's monsters, like I said. It really helps out a lot. I love it. Um the last fusion we have was um Seraphonite, because Seraphonite goes with the brilliant fusions, of course, is the best one that you want to see which i hope she doesn't get hit by the ban list honestly um but um yeah so for our links we got a link spider link Arebo, mrs radiance um gaia saber those are mainly the targets that you go into um that and i forgot about the world chalice Ib and Ningrisu. so like gaia saber is better in my opinion than deco talker because he just takes three monsters no effect monsters or anything just three monsters in general from what his effect says so why is that better he's a 26 beat stick which i mean of course with um you know uh, deco talker you can gain attack but 26 beat stick just three monsters so it's just something good to cycle into when you go into like the second scapegoat and it's like a grind game um the last links i ran was underclock taker and um Saruja because couldn't afford a border load of course but if i could i would probably cut gaia saber out because border load's pretty busted as well but saruja is mvp i almost made him every game and when i seen him i was able to just press forward with um beating down my opponent because if you can get saruja out before um alistair out and they're holding an effect veiler they're probably going to do that on saruja over alistair and you just normal summon your alistair but you have to find a way to get around it. But even if they affect Barrier Alistair and you have a way of um, 
making Saru just where you can draw four, which that does come up sometimes. Like it's especially if you have mind control and a couple of mech knights in your hand. But if you make this and you just hard draw into an invocation, you just automatically win. And I yeah, I love just being able to do that with this deck. This deck has not let me down yet, even like with me not doing too good at regionals, I still love this deck. Invokes are just fun in my opinion. I love that I love that engine so much. So for the side deck, two Gamma Seals and one Sticky String. That's mainly for the Draco matchup or if you have any problems with like getting over a certain monster. This really you have no issue with. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to get all this sorted out real fast, guys. Because I kind of have it unsorted. But, um... For the spell cards, that's just it for the monsters. No fossil dinos or anything. I think I like this. I'm going to change up my side deck a little bit in the future. But we ran two Cosmics. Two Called by the Grave. The thing is, I was running three Called by the Graves. But, um... Took a third one out, and I took a couple. I took um, my fossil dinos out, and I think I took a couple other cards out. I had to, but I can't remember which ones at the moment. But um, Call by the Grave is really good for like game three, and they force you to go first because you just hold on to this, go off with your plays as they try to ash it. You just Call by the Grave. This same concept with um, Millennium Eyes Restrict. Um, you just take their you just banish it and the effect is negated and your stuff won't get negated so um that would be it for the spells the rest are all trapped because this deck does kind of struggle sometimes at going first so it's always good to be combated at going first so one solemn judgment one solemn warning and the two strikes i like this because if you go first and you're able to set some of these you're just able and you open up hand traps your opponent just gotta pass their turn and then hope for the best. I love being able to do that. This just gives me more protection from their monsters more than anything. The next ones I ran were two D barriers. It's for the mirror match, the pendulums, Gemini, FTK, and so forth from there. It's really good. Um, and lastly, two Unending Nightmares. Mainly for Draco's, like, so you can get rid of their diagrams and stuff. Um, and if, like, you're playing against a Flood floodgate type of deck where they're gonna flip and like skill drain or anti spell on you and you just flip that up and just say no to them basically just no 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 but unending nightmare is pretty good some of this cards came out of my anti-meta deck if y'all couldn't tell like <laughs> some of it did but the things i really want to change up in this deck um if i do take it to my um ots is i'm gonna add main deck the game of seals but I would probably end up taking out one blue sky and one red moon because blue sky can be a break at some point just due to the fact that all mech knights don't use special summon the um, way that you special summon them once per turn and I feel like blue sky is sometimes a break so I might take that out and I might take um, the red moon out just because um, I want to keep it 2020 I feel like 2020 is going to make it much consistent over than going like more monsters over spells and more spells over monsters but really that's all i could think about would change in this deck besides maybe incorporating like um cosmic cyclones but i am really stressed about that another cool thing i find about using by main deck in the two kaijus is that you can choose what zone they go into so then they make sure mech knight plays more alive and that's the main reason i really want that but um really good like i feel comfortable with this build i feel comfortable with this deck just because of um the abilities that it has of otk in your opponent especially and making them like force them to either draw hard draw the card that they need or just scoot so like this deck really did give me pretty good i ain't gonna lie i was not disappointed at all i was happy with this deck but um let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do y'all have any suggestions for this deck? I'm looking for suggestions on how to make this deck better. I feel like the Brilliant Fusion Engine really did add something to it because it gives you, you're able to put a light target into the graveyard in order to make mecha buff first turn. So if you get forced to go first and you open that up, it really does come in handy quite a bit. So guys, that is going to be it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Don't forget to buy a mat. My, um, 
the link for the mat or the company will be in the description below. I have to memorize it myself. My head's like off right now, so I do apologize. But um, video on their map will be coming out as soon as I get it in the mail. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.